fans, Taryn Bray here with Tom Wilson for an Ask Me Anything presented by Capital One. We're going to get to as many fan questions as we can, but let's get started. Are you ready, Tom? I'm ready. It's a dangerous title, Ask Me Anything, but we'll see what they got. We'll try to keep it tame. Um, <laughs> the first one is, what's the most interesting thing you've done over quarantine? Most interesting thing? Um, honestly nothing that people would find that interesting I don't think um I got up to Canada spent some time with the the family and um obviously got uh, got back here um a little bit ago and hopefully we can get it, get it rolling here soon all right what is your favorite Disney movie oh man you know I don't even want to answer that because I'm I would go as far as saying I don't even know if it's Disney or not but um if you gave me a list of do you know any if you gave me a few i could i could i mean do you know how many movies disney has made tom exactly that's what i say like how do i pick how do i pick one Um, well give us the name of the one that you think might be disney and then we can i can say if i think i know it's disney or not disney is finding nemo disney i think so (laughs) i don't honestly i don't that's a good one though we'll just go with that answer yeah finding nemo classic did you watch the second one? I don't think I've seen. That was Finding Dory, right? Yeah, I didn't see it either. But... I haven't seen it, but okay. uh, maybe that'll be next on my on my list. Put that down for something you'll do in the Hub City when you need activities to do. There you go. There you go. Um, what's your favorite local DC food spot? You know, I think kind of an all of the above spot would be like a, a Peacock Cafe um, in uh, in Georgetown. There, it's got a good brunch. It's nice for us because if we have a day off on a, a Tuesday or a Wednesday or something, um, we can get a little bit of a sleep in. They still serving um, breakfast uh, generally a little bit later in the day. So that's, uh, that's a great one. Um, you know, anything in, you know, Boston or, or Clarendon. I know the new Boston Mall's got some, some great spots like True Food and stuff like that. So that was pretty uh, pump up when they revamped that place uh, for us because we spend a lot of time there. Lots of time. Um, what's your favorite rink to play in other than Capital One Arena? I think maybe, I mean, Staples is fun um, out in LA. Um, MSG in New York is obviously a um, pretty, you know, generic answer. Probably everybody knows uh, that there's been a lot of history and stuff in that rink. Um, but those places are cool because, you know, on any given night, you can look into the crowd and see you know, A-list this, A-list that, or, you know, you know, celebrities and musicians and actors and all that. So um, I think Kendall Jenner was at our game in New York this year, which was uh, a little shocking. And even, you know, in Staples playing, I think a couple of years ago, we got to play, you know, Kobe Bryant was there. So a lot of great athletes, um, you know, looking on. It's always cool to, to perform in front of uh, those type of people. When you're warming up in those arenas that have celebs, are you guys able to see them when you're warming up and know that they're there? Is it something that you know after the fact that they were there? It's sometimes you pick it up by fluke. Like when I saw Kendall Jenner, I just turned around to uh, grab a sip of water and it was like, whoa, like right there. And you just kind of like focus back on the game. Um, You know, sometimes you see it back on replays, like you see a highlight and then they, they pan to a celebrity or something like that. Um, but generally, you know, MSG does a, a good job at whoever's there. They put them on the screen during a TV timeout or something, um, which is always good for a, for a laugh or whatever on the bench. And kind of get got to get back to focusing on the game. But it's always cool when they when they show who's there and stuff and uh, mixes it up a little bit. Kind of along the same lines, is there a city that you like going to most that maybe it's not your favorite rink, but it's your favorite city to go and play in? Yeah, like for us, I mean, for me, uh, being Canadian, the Canadian road trips are fun. We go out west early on in the year, usually um, out to Vancouver and um, even going to Toronto, going back home is always fun. Um, Montreal is a, a fun place. So, you know, we're pretty fortunate uh, to get to go to a bunch of different cities and you know, you're with your buddies and you go out for dinner and stuff and experience some of the culture of of every different uh, place. But they're all, you know, it's probably easier to make a list of the ones that I that I don't like going to, (laughs) but I also wouldn't want to state that on here. No, you're a little Canadian biased, it seems too. Yeah, that's the easy, the easy way out. 
um, what is your go-to warm-up song that you play in the locker room before or right before you go out into the ice? Um, it changes a lot. Um, Ovi and I kind of bounce back and forth um, on the, the stereo kind of with our playlist. Um, some guys are pretty, yeah, some guys are pretty superstitious. So if we're winning, the guy kind of keeps it rolling. If uh, and then you lose, you can switch it up. But um, I'm trying to think on the one the year that we won. We had Boom by Tiesto. That was a big one. Well, that's your goal song, right? Yeah, that's kind of why I brought it back. And um, you know, always good buddies with Tiesto, and I've seen him. Um, had dinner with him a couple of times, and he's a great guy. So little shout out to him. Lots of Kai go on there guys in our room are big uh big fans of that pretty uh i mean you can't go wrong there so yeah it depends what time of you know before the game it is um the music obviously picks up a little bit more as right before you go out but it's it's tough keeping everybody pleased and happy <laughs> and have 20 different uh tastes in music in a room is there a favorite genre of music that you like maybe aside from like if you're warming up or something that you just tend to listen to most when you're in your car yeah, I'm a big, I'm kind of all over the place. Um, I, I like it all. I kind of pick and choose the, the good songs, per se, my opinion, from each genre uh, and kind of make a smorgasbord of, of it all. Um, but, you know, Kygo is, obviously his last album was awesome. I listened to a lot of that. A lot of the songs in the car, you, you know, are songs, hopefully, that you can have the windows down and people aren't offended. Or, embarrassed. Or whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, or, or embarrassed when I get to the, the nitty gritty of the playlist and throw, playing some throwbacks or whatever, some Backstreet Boys. But uh, <laughs> I think uh, I keep it uh, pretty, pretty, you know, consistent with just here and there, um, different genres. The Weeknd is a big one, Toronto, Toronto guy. And um, he's always good in the car and I guess Kai goes as well. So those are the, the go-tos. We need to get one of your playlists out there share it out with yeah everybody. like i yeah that's secret uh that's top secret information the playlist before the game so um, okay fair but we'll see we'll see okay. what uh maybe if uh something works out in our favor this year we'll share a yeah playlist yeah for a while there we had some like chimmer jason chimera and other guys that would uh like alzner big country guys and then oh ov would be like no country and they're <laughs> the country and um so i mean it's it's pretty funny when you get guys i think black velvet was a big song for uh for jason chimera that played for you know five six years ago that got a lot of airtime in our room do any of the european guys get to play their euro music in a different language uh there are a couple uh songs that you know koozie and orly that are actually very catchy sometimes they're hard to get on spotify or you know the mainstream listening over here but uh if we ever go out for a karaoke team night they uh they always grab the mic and give us a taste of uh, <laughs> who's actually a pretty good pretty good rapper so it's always entertaining i feel like we've seen probably some instagram stories of Kuzi singing and that seems very yeah. entertaining I mean, ha halloween party or whatever sometimes <laughs> there's uh there's a little karaoke but it's always fun <laughs> All right, next one. If you could pick anywhere in the world to visit right now, not in quarantine or not with any restrictions, where would you go and why? Ooh, um, I went to Greece last summer. That was unbelievable. Um, my buddies and I got to spend uh, 12 days or so there um, traveling around to the different islands and stuff. And that, uh, I'll definitely hope to be doing that again at some point in the future. A country that I haven't been to that I've heard is awesome is Spain. Um, you know, good golf, good nightlife, good restaurants, food, obviously. So that would be fun. You know, Rome, like Italy. Um, I've been to a few spots over in Europe, but there's definitely a, a few more that I'd like to, to check off the list. Nice. Um, out of all the great goals you've seen from your Caps teammates over the years, has there been one that has stood out the most and wowed you as a fan, maybe not even as a teammate? Ooh, they, these are tough questions. And I didn't get, I didn't get them beforehand. So you're putting me on the spot oh, here. But the, I mean, the one recently that stood out that was pretty funny was the, it wasn't, you know, I scored the goal, but it was actually Ovi that did all the work. He like toe dragged somebody, I think it was against Carolina. 
Um, and he did so much of the work. Like he just went and celebrated like, like Nick and Obi went and celebrated. And I was like, okay, yeah, like you did all the work. So we'll just celebrate. I just kind of was a backdoor, you know, open net type thing. Um, but playing with those guys on any given night, you get a front row seat to some of the times, like I have like a, you know, uh, a goal that I didn't really even do much for. And I'm like, wow, like that was an unbelievable play by them. Um, so a, a, literally a, a front row seat to some pretty special stuff. Um, I'm trying to think like there's been some, there's been some crazy goals over the years. Um, but another one that I'll, that in the Disney movie, I'll have to do some research and get, get back to you on. Get back to us. Okay. Um, what started the pregame moment with you and Oshi? I think we are talking about the butt taps. Oh, I don't even know. Um, it's so funny how some of those things start and like I can't even remember the first time that it really happened and um there's so many different ways it can go down you get like new teammates and everyone's getting their you know their superstition or traditional handshake in before the game um but uh somehow it happened I can't really remember um and then I think we won and it stuck and since then, I mean, we just try and get as creative as we can to switch it up after a loss. That's kind of the only token rule is you don't, if you know, if we lose, you're not going to do the same exact butt tap as the, the game prior. So sometimes there's some uh, low blows, some cheap shots, um, <laughs> you know, I think he broke his stick one time trying to hit a, hit a baseball uh, home run. And, uh, but it's pretty funny. Osh is, uh, Osh is one of the best guys to have around to, to keep it light. And, always has something going on so as the rest of the guys you just kind of go with the flow yeah I think everyone loves that moment between you guys <laughs> it's um, a little weird like not gonna lie but uh <laughs> you know, we're having fun with it and uh you know there's definitely uh you know when you spend so much time with the guys it, it gets uh it's nice to keep it light and, and keep it fun yeah for sure um when you were a kid which chore did you hate the most uh, making my bed was automatic that had to be done I'm not going to say that was my least favorite thing because it's really not that big a deal but I, I don't make my bed now but I did when I was 10 so that uh, that's a little bizarre that habit uh, fell off the wagon a couple of years back but uh, I don't know I think uh, uh, anything like, like I didn't I wasn't a big dishes Scott like I'd I'd rather cook I'd rather mow the lawn I'd rather go out in the yard and shovel snow I'd rather do that for some reason like after I eat I'm just like oh like the last thing I want to do is the dishes um, so you know even just going over and putting my plate in the sink seemed to be a, a bad habit for putting it into the dishwasher which is pretty easy but uh in the city of Toronto, they've gotten rid of a lot of those uh, uh, garbage, garburetor or whatever you call them, like in the sink that you just put the food on. Yeah. Um, in the city, I think they're kind of against the law in Toronto now. So it's nice I came here and it's nice to have that. It makes have it, it. <laughs> Dump it all. Actually, like we have to compost in Toronto. If you take it over to like the compost bin, put your food in there, then um, go okay, back. That sounds like a hassle. So I understand your dislike yeah you feel you feel me on that one yeah, yeah. So that, I think dishes uh I'll go with that okay um what was your favorite book that you read as a kid and why and do you have a favorite book now uh Harry Potter Harry Potter and Harry Potter probably <laughs> <laughs> that, okay but out of the six books what's number one Oh, I don't know. The, the, the beginning, the first couple, I was pretty young. Um, so I can still remember like my dad reading a chapter, I would try and read a little bit. And my mom would like my dad would come in one night and just butcher the names, say like Hermione or whatever. And I'm like, no, that's not how it, this was like before any of the movies. Right. He didn't really know. Um, but I think as they got as I got older and as we got deeper into the series, like those were the books that I just pick up and you know finish in a couple of days. That's the only only book that I've ever been able to do that with. Um, so I like the I like the ones at the end when they got a little a little darker and a little more intense. Um, Prisoner of Azkaban's good. Goblet of Fire. I, I mean they're on TV all the time. So all the time. <laughs> I just throw them on and uh, put the feet up and usually have a nap or whatever. 
kick back. Um, let's see. What's your favorite memory of playing at Capital One Arena? Oh, there's a lot. Um, just going out there is such a cool feeling. Um, I think people ask from time to time, like, you know, you still get nervous, you still get all this stuff before a big game or whatever. And uh, the coolest consistent feeling is just when you skate out on the home ice at the beginning and the, the rink is so loud and jam packed before a playoff game. It's, uh, there's really nothing like it. Um, so that's always a good starting point every night. Um, from there, you know, first game, um, you know, banner raising night was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of the big games over the years in the playoffs, you remember um, getting to play Toronto at home in Washington in the one playoffs was also fun. Um, but, you know, we've been fortunate to have a, a lot of good memories to pick from. Um, but looking back on it, that whole 2018 year was, was a lot of fun. And, you know, even the day before the parade, going out there, taking our team picture and just hanging out, it's, uh, that building will always have fond memories for sure. All right, we'll just get to a couple more here. Um, what was your favorite holiday growing up and any traditions that you had for that holiday? Um, I think probably Christmas. It's the easy, the easy answer. But um, for me, it's always been time where like, no matter what, I'd be home, I'd be at home or I'd be with my family because it's the time that we still get off. Um, you know, two or three days, even it's, it's nice. A lot of the other holidays we don't, we might be playing or whatever. Um, but growing up Christmas was always a ton of fun with my, my brothers and my family. And we have a bunch of traditions and stuff that we do on Christmas Eve and, and Christmas day and, and that, but we, we try to carry them on. They've come down here the last couple of years. So, um, it's always fun to just be together with them. But, uh, Thanksgiving in the U S is, is a lot of fun as well with the, with the football element and all that. And all the food is, is always good. Yeah, can't complain about a holiday that includes a lot of food. <laughs> yeah. Um, in time to be grateful. In time to be grateful. And there you go. Of course. <laughs> what is your favorite Caps jersey and why? Could be one that you've worn throughout your career, one that maybe you didn't get a chance to. Um, yeah, people have probably heard me say this a lot, but I actually had the OV uh, black with the gold trim um, with the capital or, or the eagle and stuff on the front and shoulders. Uh -huh. um so that was when I was probably I don't know whenever that jersey came out I was fairly young but when I posted the picture of the the Kovalchuk uh yeah. blueberry one from you know whenever it was Ovi is like where's the where's the Ovi where's the Ovi jersey so so you have to post a picture in the Ovi one now yeah there, that one I think is probably even smaller um but yeah it's pretty funny it comes full circle you know you grow up watching watching them and those guys and then uh you know, you get to, you get to play with them. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. Um, all right, we'll get to this last one here. Um, and it's of course about Hallie. What is your favorite thing about being a dog dad? Um, I think, uh, just, I mean, the, the greetings are, are, uh, <laughs> I think, you know, no matter what time of the day it is, even just now I came back from the rink and just, she's just excited to see you. And, yeah, you know, genuinely excited to see you, you know, people that, you you know, over the years, whatever, like, oh, hey, good to see you, whatever, like the dog is just super pumped. So it's a it's a pretty genuine uh, greeting. That's, uh, that's always nice. You come home from a game, or whatever, and it's a bad game, and the dog doesn't know or care. Um, and it's just excited to see you and wants to wants to play. So that's, uh, that's been a lot of fun. She's getting huge now. I just from the pictures that you guys post, she's huge. Yeah, she's uh, she's kind of starting to uh, flatten out a little bit. Like she was gaining a lot of weight and growing pretty quickly there for a while. Yeah. Um, and it's funny, like I, I'm like, you know, you weigh her and you're like, oh, I want her to be like a little bit bigger. Like Taylor's <laughs> like, no, like keep her small, like whatever. And like I'm adding a cup, and Taylor's like secretly cutting it. Less. <laughs> uh, but I think she's up to like 45 pounds and. Uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see how big she gets. We don't, we weren't really ever sure how, how big or, or small she would be, but she's been, been a treat. It's been, it's been awesome and a, a blessing to have her while, uh, you know, the world with what was going on with the whole world the last little bit. So it was fun. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, that's it for this. Ask me anything it was easy enough, right? 
Yeah, I have a couple that I got to, I guess, do do some research. The Disney one, that was stumped me. And all my years playing hockey, I've never been asked what my favorite Disney movie is. So There you go. There's a first time for everything. We're going to put a little note that we're getting yeah. Tom an answer Perfect. in the future. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, see ya.